Hi, welcome to the 10 minute video summary of the message that was shared at Henrietta Christian Fellowship on the 12th of December, 2021. My name is Don Bold, I'm the pastor of the church. I'd like to take about 10 minutes and share with you some of the highlights from this morning's message. Uh, we're gonna begin uh, where we left off last week, okay? Because we were looking at Christ the light has come. We're gonna continue on that. And so I just wanna hit the points that, where we left off, okay? Jesus Christ was born into the world to be light and to bring us to God. No man comes to the Father but by me, Jesus told us. And in John 8, 12, uh, he said, I am the light of the world. He he who follows me will not walk in darkness, but he will have the light of life. Okay, so if you're in him, you have the light of life. Okay, you have something very special to share. All right, we are empowered by the Holy Spirit to represent Jesus Christ to the world. Ephesians 5, 8, for you were formerly darkness. Now, now uh, you are light in the Lord. So walk as children of light. Okay, so because our, our witness begins uh, with what's in our hearts and how we live it out. The light has come. All right, Jesus is that light. And that's what we celebrate this, this Christmas season is that he came. All right. And so uh, we're going to take a look at the Christmas story. All right. And because uh, we are the evidence that that Christmas story is truth, because that our lives are changed, uh, that we are different people uh, because of what Christ is in our life says, yeah, he really was born in that manger. All right. So let's look at the Christmas story. And the, in Matthew 1, 18 through 25, and I believe Matthew was written to uh, Jewish uh, people that were, were going to become believers, okay? And so uh, the prophetic names uh, that Jesus fulfills are very important in Matthew, okay? So let's take a look at Matthew 1, 18 through 25. Now, the birth of Jesus Christ was as follows. When his mother Mary had been betrothed to Joseph, now, that, in essence, they're almost married, okay? Joseph is going to be referred to as her husband already, even though they are betrothed. It's not like, uh, you know, American-style engagement, okay? It's, it's a much more serious thing. All right, so uh, it says that, that it says, when she had been betrothed to Joseph, before they came together, uh, she was found to be the child of the Holy Spirit. And Joseph, her husband, being a righteous man, not wanting to disgrace her. Let's stop for a moment there. Joseph, and the character of this righteous man, this and that word can also be interpreted holy, this holy, righteous man, uh, that righteousness, that holiness caused him what? To be kind, okay? It caused him to, to be uh, equitable, to, to, to want to do the right thing here, all right? And to do something that was, was not going to bring disgrace to anyone, all right? So uh, you ever meet somebody who uh, professes to be righteous, but, you know, the righteousness is cruel, all right? So uh, is, even this, this righteous man, not wanting to disgrace her, planned to send her away secretly, all right? But when he had considered this, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream, saying, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary as your wife, for the child who has been conceived in her is of the Holy Spirit. She will bear a son, and you shall call his name Yeshua. Jehovah saves, okay? Jesus, we say it in English, but anyways, you call his name Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. Now, all this took place to fulfill what was spoken by the Lord through the prophet. Behold, the virgin shall be with child and shall bear a son. Lots of virgins, uh, you know, were with child and, and gave uh, birth to a son. But this one, this is the fulfillment. They shall call his name Emmanuel, which translated means God with us. And Joseph awoke from his sleep and did as the angel of the Lord commanded him and took Mary as his wife. Okay, down in Luke uh, chapter 2, verses 10 through 11, we're going to mention this more than once. Uh, this is uh, now the story in Luke. All right, but the angel said to the, the shepherds here, okay, do not be afraid for behold, I bring you good news of great joy, which will be for all the people. For today in the city of David, there has been born unto you a savior. Okay, another name, Savior, who is Christ the Lord. Okay, uh, these are all names ascribed to Jesus. All right, and so let's look at the birth announcements in Luke chapter 2, verse 8 through 20. Okay, we're going away from uh, the story of Joseph and, and Mary uh, and their engagement and, uh, and her being with child to the, to the time when the child has been, now been born. All right, so in Luke 2, uh, 8 through 20, in the same region, there were some shepherds staying out in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. It's dark out there. We don't know dark. You look up in the sky, on a, on a dark night and you'll see light reflecting off the clouds because we've got light everywhere. And an angel of the Lord suddenly stood before them. Can you imagine this? And the glory of the Lord shone around him? No, around them. All right, so I mean, this is, this is wow, uh, out in the middle of the darkness there. And they were terribly frightened, but the angel said to them, do not be afraid, for I bring you good news of great joy, which will be for all the people for today. In the city of David, there has been born for you a Savior who is Christ the Lord. And this will be a sign for you. You will find the baby wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger. That would have been an unusual sight. 
and suddenly there appeared, and I want you to, little Cecil B. DeMille here, okay, just get this, there suddenly there appears this multitude of the heavenly host, okay, I just want you to picture that dark uh, hills of Judea, and just, you know, this suddenly just, there's this, this, this angel of the Lord appears, and the glory of the Lord surrounds us, and now he's starting to, to declare things, and what starts to happen is, is that you, light just just you know rising up all over the, the the hillsides as far as you can see all right it's, it says this multitude of the heavenly host praising god and saying glory to god in the highest and on earth peace among men with whom he is pleased when the angels had gone away from them into heaven the shepherds began saying to one another, let's go straight to bethlehem they had a job to do they're supposed to be out there watching those sheep but they said nope not not tonight uh, they left those sheep in the on the hillside there and they went straight to what to bethlehem to take a look see what's going on all right and so uh it says here that so they came in a hurry and found their way to mary and joseph and the baby as he lay in the manger when they had seen this they made known the statements which had been told of them about this child and and all who heard it wondered at the things which were being told them by the shepherds. But Mary, okay, his mom, all right, she treasured all these things. Think about the, 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 her exchange with Elizabeth and all the other things that have happened, pondering them in her heart. The shepherds went back glorifying and praising God for all that they had heard and seen, just as it had been told to them. Just as it had been told to them. You understand something that, that, you know, that what had been told to them was God's word to them. All right, and they, they held on to it, and they believed that it would be just as God had spoken. All right, and so, uh, yeah, so the power of witness, okay? These people, these, these shepherds are witnesses. The power of witness here, what makes it more than just human testimony is that they are speaking out what the words of God, all right? And to understand the power for witness is in God's words, not ours. You know, we add a little explanation here and there, but you want to really give uh, God's words the preeminence. And you want to do it with Holy Spirit empowerment. Acts 1, Acts 1 8 tells us that you will receive power and the Holy Spirit comes upon you. And that isn't just so we can feel cool. It's so that we can be witnesses. Okay, you'll be my witnesses. And so we are the new new creation in Christ. All right. God has committed to us the word of reconciliation. Listen to this in 2 Corinthians 5, 17 through 19. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, but he's a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things have come, new things have come. Man, I'll tell you, when I saw my early testimony, when I first came to Christ, I have a hard time believing it myself. Okay, now all these are things, okay, are from God, who reconciled us to himself through Christ and gave us the ministry of reconciliation. So all this change that God has brought about in your life uh, came about because God was reconciling you to him. Namely, that God was in Christ reconciling the world to himself, not counting their trespasses against them. Wow. Okay, so there's this debt that, that cannot be paid. You got no currency, you got no way to pay this at all. And so God says, I desire this relationship with you. I will bear the debt. I will pay uh, the cost so that these things can actually be forgiven, not just by fiat, but, be, but in, in real sense. They are, they are forgiven, okay, because of the price that, that God paid for us. And he has committed to us the word of reconciliation. God is, is desiring for people to be reconciled to him and to walk in relationship with him. Matthew 15, 13 and 14 tells us in this regard, we are the light of the world. We are the salt of the earth. We are the people. People that Christ put here uh, to be witnesses to this. And so there's a witness uh, in this that, that rises sometimes out of our prayer life in a discussion about the importance of prayer in 1 Timothy chapter 2. Verses 3 and 4 goes on to say, this is good and acceptable in the sight of God our Savior, all this praying, okay, who desires all men to be saved and to come to the knowledge of the truth. You know, to understand that that's, I mean, whatever they desire, you represent what God deserves because that's God's word, all right? And so having an answer for the steadfastness of your hope, you know, sometimes people just don't get it. How can you be so confident? As I'm not confident in me, I'm confident in him. And First Peter, I love Peter, okay? Th chapter 3, verse 15, he says this, but sanctify Christ as Lord in your hearts. You know, make sure that you've done that. Make sure that you've made a point that, that you have set apart that your relationship with Christ, okay, uh, is, you know, he is Lord in your heart, okay? And always being ready to make a defense. And that is, it's apologia. Uh, that means to, you know, not, not an offense like a fist fight, but a defense that says, look, let me help you understand. You know, to be able to, to help people understand, okay, to give that to everyone who asks you an account of the hope that is in you, but to do it with gentleness and reverence. And so on this Christmas season, uh, I'm just encouraging all of us that the light of Christ be shining brightly in us and that we be uh, the people who, who do the things we've talked about here. And so with that, I'm going to say God bless you and we'll see you next time on the 10-minute video summary.